Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangout. My name is Noel Ruiz and I'm a designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week is my brother Pedro. Good morning everybody, I'm Pedro as Creative Tech here at Adafruit and every week we're here to share 3D printed projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. That's right, this is where we combine 3D printing and DIY electronics to make inspirational projects for you folks. Speaking of you folks, hello everybody, welcome to the chat. The chat, welcome to the show. We're hanging out in the live broad live broadcast chat in our discord server if you'd like to get an invite to the discord server the link for that is discord.gg slash adafruit and we're hanging out in that sidebar where it's a general there's some chats there and we are hanging out in the live broadcast chat room we're gonna take a moment to welcome everybody to the show and we do some shout outs Pedro, run through the shout outs while shout you take a drink to everybody hanging out we are in the youtube chat good morning patrick ranskin on the discord or did my tab go for Discord? I'll do it. Do Esther, Andy Calloway, me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> and anybody who else is watching, we're on all the channels. So hello and welcome to the show. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Yeah. And we're... good night to everybody hanging out all across the world. Yeah. Go ahead and jump into this week's show. Yeah, all right. Let's do some housekeeping in the morning, as we like to do. First up, I want to tell you about the freebie deals going on. If you spend more money with Adafruit and you add stuff to your cart, you're going to get automatically added some things. So let me run through the tiers. The first tier is for $99 or more. You get a free half size Perma Proto. For orders that are $149 or more, you'll get the half size Perma Proto plus a randomly selected STEM QT board. If you, have an Ad if you have an Adafruit account, we're going to make sure you don't get the same one twice. For orders that are $200 or more, you'll get the randomly selected QT, QT, STEM QT board the half-size Perma Proto, and ground shipping from UPS for continental US only. And for orders that are $2.99 or more, you'll get the free shipping, the randomly selected STEM QT board, the half-size Perma Proto, and a Circuit Playground Express. Excellent. Um, limited time only while supplies last, and supplies are going quick, so check it out. You get automatically added to your order. So there you go, those are the freebies. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about the newsletters. If you'd like to get notified when Adafruit adds new stuff to the shop on the weekly, you get this once a week. It's called the New New Newsletter. You can check that out by going to adafruit.com slash newsletter. And if you want daily newsletter from different categories such as IoT Monthly, Python on Hardware, 3D Printing, Biohacking, you can go to adafruitdaily.com and check all the boxes for the categories that, uh, that, your interest, that pique your interest. We make sure that we don't spam you, and this is a separate site and server, so it's not tied to your Adafruit account. That's adafruitdaily.com. If you are in the market for an employer or a new gig, check out the jobs board from Adafruit. That's jobs.adafruit.com. You can go to it now, and let me just quickly highlight some of the new ones. Here's a new posting for a microcontroller C or C plus programmer. This is a remote position. Um, in the Virginia area. And here's another one here, electronic, electrical engineer and technicians at Power Tools, um, Stanley Black & Decker. Oh, look at that, full-time position. So check those out. It's free to create a resume or a profile, whether you're a maker or an employer. So check those out at jobs.adafruit.com. Boom, boom, boom. All right. We are sponsoring this contest. It's still ongoing. It is the Halloween Hack Fest. Um, it's brought to you by Hackaday.io and in collaboration with DigiKey and Adafruit, us. Um, check it out. <laughs> I didn't pull up the, the site, so let me go to it. I forgot about it. I'm sorry. But I'm here to remind you about it. Even though I forgot about it, you still have time to uh, to make a project. All right, I'm here. What do I click on? I click on contests. I click on, oh, there's a bunch of contests. But the one I'm promoting is the one that we're giving away free stuff for. That's the Adafruit one. The Halloween Hawk Fest, the deadline for that is Monday, October 11th, 
this year at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. Ma, 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 ma. Let me see what new submissions. There's a total of 14 submissions. That means uh, I don't know how many more than last week, but there's more. There's, a, there's fun ones. There's been eyes and skeletons and all sorts of fun inspirations. So check those out if you are into the spirit of making. This is the Maker Holiday, so check it out and you can get some free stuff. If you use eight of your parts, we double the winning prize. So that's really cool. So head on over to whatever that website is, <laughs> Hackaday.io. I posted the link in all I showed of the you text. how to get there. You click on the link. It's pretty easy. They have a good UI. Shout you get a direct link there. Thank you, Pedro. Hackfest, Halloween. We're here. We have a lot of Halloween projects this week anyway. So Yeah, that Nixie tube one looks pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, as well as oh. this, uh, what is it, this Mimic Sorry, one? I already like, went away from it. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Where, where's this Nixie tube you're taking about? Scroll that down. one? There it is. Oh, that's cool. In 12 in 15. Ah, safety coffin grave bell. Looks pretty cool. Yeah. Sweet. So and even then, if you're not want to enter, you just want some Halloween inspiration, check out the submissions. They're really cool. And shout out to everybody for submitting your projects. Yeah, super cool. Since people do post the code, you can grab that for your own uh, Halloween projects in the works. Yeah. Cool, cool. And that is the Halloween Hackfest. All right, what other stuff do I have? I think that's it. Yeah, I'll do the other stuff in the, you know. Um, okay, so let me go back over to the Discord, say hello, any shout outs that need to be shouted. Hello, hello. I will shout you out. Thank you everybody hanging out again to join the chats. It's at discord.gg slash Adafruit. Yep. You can see all the banter going on there and all of the links for everything we're talking about. Go ahead and check that out. Yeah. And before we go, or let's go ahead and jump into this week's project. All right, if you head on over to learn that learn.adafruit.com, click on the new button. Launched, uh, I think, new one. on Tuesday, I think, or yesterday at some time. It is the Starro face mask. Yeah, here it is. Oh, it's on. This is a 3D printed uh, inspired mask from the Suicide Squad movie, the Starro, one of yeah. the characters. This was a request from Mr. PT, uh, Mr. Lady Ada. Mr. Lady Ada himself. Really liked the film. They used a couple of our boards in the film. So mm -hmm. he wanted to give back and actually make some of the uh, props that were used there. Uh, we did make a Starro for a time lapse Tuesday. Right. It was uh, someone else's uh, print that they made. It was a little big. I had to modify it so that it would fit the hollow wing and wanted to make a completely custom one that has all of the built-in standoffs. You can uh, have this be a little bit smaller and custom made so it can uh, use the 85A Ninja Flex. Yeah, let me say that the Halloween is the hero of these type of projects. Yeah. The Halloween comes in two different variants. We have the Halloween M0 and the Halloween M4. Both are mighty fine products. They if you if you don't have any coding uh, skills, it, it just ships like this. You get <laughs> you get an animated eye. Shout out to Phil B. Paint Your Dragon for coming up with this one. It's such a kind of flagship kind of product, really. Yeah, it's rated right out of the box, so you don't have to do any coding if you don't want to. You do have the ability to update the shader for the eye, so you can change the color, have it be like a cat eye or like a goat eye. I think is a really popular one. So that is all available to do on the uh, M4 uh, model. That's what we're using here. It has a nice, uh, like a viewing angle with that screen. And everything is built in, so you don't have to have any uh, like sensors if you want. Uh, you don't have to add any of that stuff. And with the model, you have access to uh, all of your ports. So your on and off button and on the side here, you can reach the uh -huh. USB cable there in there go. to do recharging of your battery. You have um, you can like reroute uh, your battery. So if you don't want to have a lipo battery on your face, you can have it go into your pocket or anywhere else. Uh, because we are using Ninja Flex, uh, we could use uh, some of the filament to just create a head strap for that. Or you can just have, add this to a model, and you can have uh, some memory in terms of molding the edges here. So you can have it look a little bit more curved if you don't want it to have that flat look. So a bunch of stuff you can do in terms of the, uh, the modeling for this. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to get across is that we have a bunch of the Ninja Flex spools in stock in the store. 
So you can pick those up. We'll go over that a little bit. Okay. And the other thing is just uh, bringing to attention that you can airbrush Ninja Flex. So uh, a lot of the things that we started using this before way back in the day was for doing wearables and that still holds true. Definitely really good for this type of project. Not just diffusing NeoPixels, but for any of the flexibility you might want to have a costume on your person. Yeah. So all snapped together uh, stuff in terms of the uh, lens here. And we have all of our built-in uh, standoffs for the hollowing. Yeah, the following comes with four um, M3 screw holes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it makes it really easy to attach to things. You can sew it if you have fabric, if you're not 3D printing. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a really awesome thing. Every Halloween, it's, it's great to come up with a new project and we mm -hmm. just toss in, <laughs> just throw it. <in. laughs> Just throw it in there. Depending um, on what the, you know uh, what I mean. the the culture uh, events that are happening for that year, mm. uh, in terms of uh, this is perfect. It's almost like we designed the, the hardware for for Starro, but no, yeah. it's it's uh, it's kind of a legacy product. Mm -hmm. So it's nice and uh, we call it like uh, soft in terms of the elasticity. So bring uh, your projects to life with the Adafruit Halloween. Yeah, yeah. Is that a good tag? <laughs> good tag. So the way it's designed is to have the edges taper out so you have more flexibility on those sides. And mm. then in the center, you have enough space for the hollowing itself. Can't wait to put this on our Christmas tray. <laughs> <laughs> or any what? model. Yeah, Let's go ahead and jump into the learn guide. Let me post the okay. link to all this in here if you well, want let me, to follow Yeah, well, you do that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pull out the product pages. As you can see, the Halloween M0 Express is in stock right now for $34.95. 28 are in stock right now. So you can check this out. You got all the different sensors and it's a feather compatible board. So if you want to add even more stuff to it, well, there you go. That is a good point. It's got I a wish I had time to add an external it's speaker. It's got so much stuff to it. All these ports and stuff, you want to connect other sensors to it. Um, let's see, it has a, an accelerometer. It has eight megabytes of flash. It's got a built-in NeoPixel, on built-in on off switch. Ports for a NeoPixel, ports for a speaker because it has a built-in amplifier. It even has a built-in volume knob, right? Uh, it has a light sensor that pokes through, which actually changes and adjusts the iris. Yeah. So if you're wondering why is that iris so big, it's because it's covered up right now. But that's sort of part of the aesthetic. And of course, micro B USB jack. So all these lovely goodies for only 34 bucks. And if you want the upgraded version, it's not in stock at Adafruit, but it is in stock with DigiKey. They have eight in stock right now. This is um, the Halloween M4. It has built in um, NeoPixels. Let me just type in Halloween or just 3900 because that's the PID. Oh no, it wasn't. It was like 4300. I'm posting the direct link if you want to get it on know. DigiKey. And it's the orange Halloween edition. Again, this isn't in stock, but it is in stock. See that red button that says buy on DigiKey? You can click that and that'll bring you over here. You can see that it has eight in stock and it ships immediately. Excellent. And it's only 39 and a five, which is like four or five dollars more than the M0. I would recommend the M4 version just because it's got a, a gorgeous IPS display. It's double the pixels. I think double the speed because it's an M4 Cortex. M4 and it has those side lit LEDs. It comes in this beautiful orange. And I forgot to mention that it has cap touch things, cap touch pads yeah. on the bottom. So if you want to use that in your project somehow, you could use the onboard cap touch or you can break these out uh, to, with some copper tape or some other type of like conductive material. It's got so much going for it. It really is an awesome product and it comes like this out of the box. You Same don't have on. to upload code or anything, you just turn it on. So this is great for cosplayers that don't want to even bother with like uploading code it's just there already it mm -hmm. just ships as an eyeball which is great yeah staying on the um on the point of the touch pads on there we mm -hmm. have done experiments with mixing ninja flex and the conductive oh. pla filament that we have and that works perfect so That's you right. could break those touch pads out and have it be like on the tips of the star and have it like look to left right or play sound effects ton of stuff that you can add to this uh base level uh project, which is a lot of the projects that we do, we want you to have a little starting point to jump off of and add more uh, features and uh, abilities. If you're looking for more inspiration, you can scroll down to the learn section of the product. Over here, there's a link that says see all guides. And you can see all the guides from like last year. Eh, there's not that many, but hey, the M0 has even more, which is over here, right? 
And one of Silence. the stars of the show <laughs> is going to be the Ninja Flex. We have about a hundred spools of the Ninja Flex in stock. I'm not done with all the oh. <laughs> learn guides. There's like a hundred uh, M0, uh, Halloween M0 uh, learn guides because this was like the first board and there's so many things that we did with it. Um, so yeah, check those out. Some of the, sorry, Safari. <laughs> it just doesn't load all the GIFs. Uh, we put it on a pumpkin one year. That's awesome. You can connect two of them if you want. Make a little but nowadays eyes. we have monster eyes, right? I like the uh, uh, always popular Halloween. Uh, the what is it? Mm -hmm. oh, the book. Book. From, oh, the book. Yeah. From Look Hocus Pocus. There's so many like characters and, and props that use an eyeball, and it's really nice to to have a product that just does that really well. All right. So there you go. There's the Halloweens. Uh, I guess head on back over to the learn guide, or did you want to talk about Ninja Flex? Yeah, so we got a bunch of these spools for Ninja Flex in stock, and I want to spend a little bit of time on that just because uh, of it being in stock and because of the price of it, we actually have the lowest price for these spools. If you look around places like Amazon or Fenner Drives, who makes the Ninja Flex brand of oh, the gosh. flexible filament, it's actually like 60 bucks. We have them in stock for $29. And it lasts quite a while. The spool that I actually used on this, I think was like seven years old. Yeah, it's, it does <laughs> so really to... good when it comes to like, do you need to dry it out? Do you need to moisturize it? Do you need to, no, it's pretty good. Um, at least in our case, we live in Florida where it's very humid and yeah. it seems to work. So uh, yeah, if you are in the market for Ninja Flex, I think Adafruit has the cheapest, most affordable Ninja Flex you can yeah. get right now. Sure, you can get some, some sane, smart TPU. This is Ninja Flex, it's got that special blend of proprietary chemicals <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, i did some tests on uh well mistakenly printed this on a bowden printer and it worked just fine really yeah so we were able to use the exact same settings that i was using on the direct drive and with a 0.5 retraction it printed out very nice all i had to do was just slow down the speed of it and it would have looked even better yeah we really like the um, the white or the translucent because you can paint it, it mm -hmm. diffuses lovely, and it's just a really good shade of white. So that's why we, we, we really recommend the white stuff. And yeah. that's kind of how you started off with. You can see here that the... Uh, and if you could scroll down there. a little bit, we also have the glow in the dark white. one as well. Obviously, you didn't use that because I'm doing the airbrushing on it mm. and would have covered up the, glow, the glow. It's right there. Here it is. Got two spools of that left. Ooh. So now we picked that up before. Halloween is over. Yeah. Definitely want to make some, uh, uh, as you've seen before with some of the Ninja Flex projects, um, you can make uh, like window clings on it. So oh, that, some of the Lego. Yeah, so uh, you can attach these to, uh, to windows to make like uh, decorations for your windows. Cool. All, All right, right, moving on. Let's go yeah, ahead let's and jump, jump into through the, the learn guide. guide. All right, here's the learn guide. Check it out. Got a YouTube video. It's a fun little trailer. Nice little bit on the construction for this. And one of the uh, points we wanted to highlight again is uh, being able to make mounts for your board. So Ninja Flex does allow that ability. And then being able to airbrush it or even paint on it is a very nice touch. So you can do that. And then it's, below that. Yeah. Uh, the rechargeability of the uh, Halloween itself. Oh, it has a built-in LiPo charging circuit. Yes. I forgot, it's got so much going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you can hide any of those cables in there or add more mounts. Like we were saying before, speaker, you can very easily add that to one of the arms. Mm -hmm. A bunch of the prod uh, products are in stock. So like the uh, plastic convex lens uh, definitely gives that eyeball look. Uh, not required, but Act, uh, adds to mm -hmm. the look of the eyeball. Yeah, as you look around, it, it is making it look a little bit more depth to it. And without this, it would look really kind of not alive. But you want to be aware that, like, in certain angles, like, look, it's it's a come on, it's a piece of, it's an optical lens, so you're not going to get every viewing angle. But uh, that's pretty good right here. You can see it's got that 3D depth to it. So there you go. I remember last year or two years ago, like it was so hard to keep these in stock, the lenses. <laughs> yeah, that's why we only have like two left. <laughs> yeah, but hey, they're in stock right now for about four bucks and they're perfectly fitted um, for to fit over the display on the Halloween M0 or M4. All right, when it comes to the battery, we got a 500 milliamp LiPo battery, which is um, pretty good. 
Hmm? Should last a little bit for that. Yeah. Or you can go bigger if you want to reroute that mm -hmm. and add it into your pocket. Real quick, while we're talking about the Ninja Flex, uh, Duester was asking, or Mark Campbell was asking about the retraction. Uh, so I'm using 0.5 uh, retra uh, retraction for the yeah, 85 Yeah, we got settings a. up in the learn guide and we can walk through yeah, yeah. setting by setting. So let's wow. switch back over. You should be able to go as high as like one, but I'm more comfortable doing it at 1.5 millimeters just because of the uh, the geometry. On your Bowden? On the direct drive. I used one, uh, 0.5 on the Bowden and it survived. So uh, your mileage may vary, but it did work, as I said earlier, uh, with having the 85A on a Bowden uh, extruder. Okay. And uh, since the enders are a little bit close to the uh, CR10s in terms of the, the way that the extruder is, uh, mm -hmm. it should work on an ender as well. So definitely uh, let us know on your results on that. It worked pretty good on ours. Sweet, DeWester saying that um, they're printing Flex on their Ender 3 Pro all the time, yeah. just some temperature adjustments and retract. That's great. Yeah, we're using a 230C, or a, if that doesn't work, you can go up to like yeah. 235 or 240. Okay. Um, and Let's the speed go ahead. is about, uh, we'll get to it, yeah, yeah 50 like, millimeters. We'll second. have some reference points. So once you see all the parts, yeah, 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 click on the JSC printing. extension, you can get one with the on and off button, and then the diagonal flush cutters too, to clean up the print, since it is gonna come out uh, a little bit stringy. Don't uh, worry, uh, it can clean up very nicely, as you can see here. I yeah. should have taken a picture, like right when it came off the uh, printer, it looks super stringy. Um, like especially like the inside of it, but all of that cleans up very nice. Yeah, you can cut it, you can trim it. It's really nice. Uh, it's, it's flexible material. It's like super duper robust, but you can still cut it, which mm -hmm. is great. All right, so in the 3D printing page, you're gonna find all the settings that Peter's used in this model. Um, so 85A is the shore hardness for the Ninja Flex. Yeah. There's different you types can, of Ninja Flex. You can use Cheetah. Yeah, so this is, it's a, they call it TPE. Uh, so you can use TPU, which is what like some of the other flexible materials are. It is not going to be as elastic if you use those other um, f flexible brands, but it should still work for the tips to um, bend those around. It is uh, thin enough okay. that that should work. Go ahead and walk through each bullet point. That way you can visually say like, here's why. Yeah, so, so the, why do you print at 230C? To 233 to 230C, so you can have uh, optimal uh, flow, right. so you're not uh, getting any uh, under, under extrusion. extrusion. Yeah, it just make sure that, yeah, like I just said, the flow is good. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, so a little bit hotter than something like PLA. Yeah. The other thing is the initial layer height. You don't want this to fuse to your bed, or if you're using like a blue tape, you don't want it to like, to get that blue color on this um, yeah. filament. It's infamous for like fusing to a PEI sheet yeah. or a, and that's a variant of what that. what I printed on and the secret to that is having a higher initial layer height. So I'm starting off here at 0.3 so that's gonna you know print a little bit higher on the bed but mm -hmm. because it is NGFLX it is going it to sticks still really sticks. well. Yeah. Okay. And because it's, I think it's like a little heavier than the PLA it does uh, sort of tend to stick down too. Now there isn't any glue stick, any hairspray, no, none of that no. stuff you used. Yeah. It just adheres to PEI very well. Okay, mm -hmm. and it's a textured bed as well. Right? Yeah, and then standard layer height, uh, 0.2. Uh, you can go up to 2.5, but I just wanted to have these curves to be nice and uh, not have so many steps in the layers. So used a 0.2 layer height for that. I can't believe you printed at 50 millimeters a second. Well, this is on a um, direct drive. Okay. It worked on a Bowden as well. The uh, entire again, print? Or just yeah, like the, the entire, layer? no, the entire print. Oh my gosh. No, for the, uh, I think this, the, I should have put that in there. For the uh, mm -hmm. initial layer height, the speed for that, I think it's like 20 millimeters a second. That's super key, man. But I think that's <laughs> default. Uh, I will okay. add on in there. Okay. And let's highlight it the here. The first layer of NinjaFlex printed very, very yeah, slow. 20 to 10, 20 to 10 millimeters. You're backwards, 10 to 20. 10 to 20 <laughs> millimeters. Because then it'll make sure that you're adhering well to the bed. And that first layer is the most critical layer. So uh, that 50 millimeters a second is pushing it very much like. Yeah, I'm surprised it worked. Again, uh, I thought I was printing in the Cheetah, which is the TPU. It's like the 95A sure hardness. Mm -hmm. But it, that was able to print the 85A on a Bowden. Your magical <laughs> printer. <laughs> okay. 
And then uh, Stuart Riggs and uh, DeWester are having a nice little chat. Uh, Mark Gambler as well in the chat at uh, discord.gg slash Adafruit. If you want to see some of the settings that these guys are using, they've all had really good luck. Uh, Stuart is saying that uh, with his Prusa and Ultimakers, uh, the default settings for Flex uh, turns out really good, which, yeah, I have noticed that the, uh, the Ultimaker uh, settings that Cura has built in and are always being constantly it's updated great. with uh, the apps. Yeah. Uh, those work very well as, um, also. And on a glass, yeah, it, it adheres to glass very well. And I yes. love the glass because shiny. It's, uh, yeah, you can have that shiny look and that's actually what's required to have it cling to a window. So if you want to make that's those right. decorations, forgot to mention that part, you have to use a glass. Um, yeah, you're jumping bed. all over the place though. So let's I know, bring I know. it back. There's here. just so much you can do with the so Ninja what Flex. Do you, it is, yes. A million uses. Okay. Yeah. How about a heated bed? You heated would like bed, 50C? I'd... 50C is plenty. Okay. Um, you can actually print with, if you're using like blue tape, you don't need any heat. Yeah, at you all. can print cold. You can print amazing. cold. But yeah. you've got to use that blue tape, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. It might work with the PI. I did not try it, but um, mm -hmm. it, it might work. For the glass bed, you do have to use a 50E. Uh, see for that heated bed and and on to the okay so that's the, the the kind of your baseline slice settings support material with ninja flex it works that's pretty crazy. good yeah <laughs> uh, pretty much the same support material uh, or the support settings that i use for pla uh standard point two uh just make you know it makes the uh, extrusion for the supports thinner so you're able to more easily remove that Okay. Um, the you, density is at four percent. Density at four percent. You don't want too much. You Depends do not need that much. Depends on the size of your part, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the height. That's like the gap between the the supports and the actual geometry for that. It's at 0.21. Interface on, roof on, zigzag for the pattern and the roof pattern as well. There's no speed adjustments uh, for whatever the, the supports. Yeah. It'll just stick to whatever your baseline is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, and this was sliced with the Cura slicer, correct? Yep. Okay. This was all sliced. I need to put that in there. <laughs> oh, actually, That's fine. does it say that? No, I thought it did. Yeah, it does. Yep. These with parts Cura. are sliced with Cura. <laughs> but again, right. like people are saying in the chat, uh, the Prusa slicer, uh, we have printed Ninja Flex on when we had the Prusas. Look at this. Pretty good. Look at all, like, this isn't bad because this is what you're focusing on. Right? Yeah, this is all the overhang. Do that while I fix my. Uh, yeah, these are all the, on this side. This is, uh, it prints. There you um, go. That looks so much better. So like there that. is a good look at the uh, the bottom layer of, like, you know, but you're how not the this. support is actually able to make this work. Sure, it's string and all, but you're not really worrying about that. Yeah. It's still intact. Like, this isn't falling apart. So tell us about um, some of the geometry here. Yeah, so just the, uh, when you're designing this, you just want to make sure that you have like a super big fillet. So it's attaching to uh, all the sides. I kind of see it there. Because if it doesn't, um, it will be very easy to rip this off if it doesn't have all those fillets in there to connect to the rest of the geometry. So that's the only tip on that. Okay. And then the, um, this press fits in. So there is like a little uh, cavity in here. There's a ledge there? A little ledge, lip. lip. Mm. That the uh, that this slip catches onto goes into yeah okay cool so that's the only for design uh, wise just take a look uh, for that and of course all of the Fusion 360 files are there so you can grab all of the geometry or the dimensions what diameter what about the all Halloween that. board a Halloween board the PCB of the 3D model of the PCB yeah Did you, you can get that? all of that yeah of course okay. uh, otherwise you know you can't get these all lined up perfectly without. <laughs> I'm doing a bunch of different tests, but yeah, you can get all of the, I use the um, Halloween M4 board for that. It, the zero is the exact same, uh, the standoffs for it. All right, I'm loading the, uh, on the learn guide, I clicked on the edit design button and that brings you straight in to uh, the kind of previewer. You mm -hmm. can see here how the model is. Yeah, the only thing I didn't and add was the, the lens, but you can grab the, G, the uh, diameter for the lens. Wow, there, there it is, there's the board. Those are the mounting holes. The, um, or I should probably undo, can you undo? No. Well, you, there he is. So if you want a 3D model of the hollowing board, um, I have both versions, the M0 and the M4. Yeah. So it's just a really good look at like every component. Cause if you have something that needs to uh, break out and expose um, any of these, you can see here all the ports and all the things are there. It's a little bit sluggish here because I'm on the browser and I'm streaming, but 
it's critical to have this if you're doing like a really accurate model. Yeah, I needed to make sure that uh, the clearance was uh, you know big enough to fit the the bottom part of it. So I'm measuring from the the um, Stemma ports. Yeah, and um, this this like would the, be a good reference part. if you want to know how big Pedro made the diameter yep. of of the of the the lens. This is a good reference point here. But uh, yeah, there you go. That's a good use of, uh, of the model. There you go. One of the other things I wanted to add, I just didn't ran out of time, was like having little flaps like we do for the back here, but have those flaps actually be on over the uh, screw so you could hide that a lot more better. Mm, yeah. uh, so that's uh, things you can add to that or additionally to add more screws to that. And the reason I'm using screws is because like the, um, hot glue or like sewing it, you know, it would just uh, hinder if I wanted to have this be as modular as it is, like switch out the board or be able to show the inside of it. Yeah, I think it's rather time consuming, but you'll get a really, really nice uh, finish if you were to sew it together. Mm -hmm. But you know, then it yeah. makes it harder to get to, to it get if into. you wanna get into it. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's just some options. And then the other thing, uh, I think that's it with this for the 3D printing um, portion of it. Let me jump over. Any other comments and stuff? Yeah, just another uh, more ups on the uh, 3D models. Definitely a time saver. Yeah, before the integration of uh, Eagle and Fusion, we spent so much time with the caliper, mm -hmm. measuring the distance between the standoffs, and you know, lots of more iterations that way because you know we have to get them as close as we can. This way, it's literally just extruding where the mounting holes are to create your standoffs. Cool. And then, uh, yep, confirmation right. that, yeah, uh, Stuart Riggs has yep, yep. experience printing on the PEI. -E -E and yeah, I have had it where it like completely fused yeah, it'll rip to the PEI. -E oh, yeah, it's ripped it off. I had to get like new beds for it. So, fair warning, so Ninja Flex. <laughs> make sure that, make absolute sure that your bed is completely level that it's not you know that that nozzle is not so close to the bed or it will fuse with the ninja flex got it all right let's move on to the assemble page gonna get a little bit quicker here if you want to cover all the things oh yeah, so yeah, yeah. about airbrushing you're... yeah that's one of the things that we love about the ninja flex you're able to airbrush it and create this nice little gradient look for all the little details on there again i'm not a good you know very well experienced in airbrushing and by any means, but you can definitely get in there and add a bunch of details to get like all those little, you know, uh, little circles that are uh, present in the model from the movie. So you can definitely okay. add all that stuff on there. Start with the base of the, uh, the it's like a fuchsia pink uh, outlines and then the blue on the inside. Yeah, and just real quick, this is the- uh, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The airbrush. I think it's- Airbrushing system. Cheap. Yeah, so it comes with all the colors. It comes like with the uh, it's a kit. Yeah, comes with the pen. Kit. Comes with the the oh, bottle. I don't pen. know. I don't. I have never tried airbrushing, folks. But if you if you want to get into it, this is a really good kit. You can get it off Amazon. Um, it's about two hundred bucks or so. Yeah. This is the deluxe kit. We have a link. Um, Pedro will toss you a link, but the, Pedro also linked it in the overview page. So if you really are interested in airbrushing, you want to get a kit. It comes with everything you need. Is that cool? Yeah, and um, you can get all these colors pre-made, but since I only had like the basic colors that it comes with, I had to mix all these colors to That's get cool. the fuchsia. That's cool, you can mix colors. That's really so good. So you good, can do that, yeah. Good skill. You're already able to mix all the colors. Rawr. Very cool. I would definitely go and pick up the plug color the I need, the wall, though. Right? <laughs> it's one of the things you plug into the wall. Yep, plug it into the wall. Did you need to wear a mask or anything? Like, you're no. pretty good? Like, um, Maybe you should. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we have like air filters and ventilation right, in the room you. where I painted everything. Okay. But how long do you think it took you to paint it all? Um, I don't know. Like, all right, don't, don't, I never like asked that hour, question. Like an hour, half hour. It, it wasn't too long. It took long me three days. No. no, no, no. It's like maybe a half hour. And even the dry time is relatively quick. It's, it dries pretty quick, then, huh? Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's an airbrush. Mm -hmm. It's not acrylic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's pretty forg uh, forgiving too, the Ninja Flex, when oh, you're painting on it. If you get sloppy, you are able to wipe away some of the color uh, before it completely dries. I remember the first time you did airbrushing, you tested it on a lot of pieces of paper, and you would be Just like, oh, here's the... it splattering, or I don't have enough yeah. water, or I don't have enough yeah, yeah. air. So Mm -hmm. To definitely yeah, <laughs> test out uh, just like the distance you have to go to have to be to right. get like that gradient yeah, or so that. So test it on paper, right? Mm -hmm. 
I've never ever still pitch your own. I'm There's like, YouTube videos you on how start? to. Okay. <laughs> I think I watched I'm not going to teach you, but it's, you know, you're going to learn um, by doing. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Because getting, like, again, the distance of how far away you are to get that gradient yeah. to go, you know, it is, it's like a Photoshop, you know, when you're using the, the, the hard edge, mm -hmm. like how you have to figure out, you know, what setting you set that okay. up for. You're figuring out the distance for that and how, um, how much you're pushing on the actual lever to... Oh, really? Yeah, so all of that is... You, it's like the, you got to get the muscle memory for all of that. So definitely Dang. a bunch of tests before okay. actually printing on that. And I actually had a bunch of um, extra uh, parts just in case I messed up. I would have another one to paint mean, on. Yeah. So this isn't going to wash off, is it? Uh, it shouldn't. Right. Um, I'm sure you could rub Let's it off try. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Here for all the questions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could add like some coating on top, which would definitely be a good idea to get like that oh. shiny look that mm -hmm. the because um, this is matte looking. Yeah, yeah but it's it all matte looking. Well. I like how matte it when is. you have like a light against it, you can see like a bit of a shine. Mm. Uh, but maybe some sort of coating on top would uh, definitely make it give it that wet look. I'd be curious to see if it cracks upon flexing, like uh, some sort of glossy finish or something. Oh yeah, yeah. Crack, we should so. test it out. Or not. That's fine. <laughs> Any questions about airbrushing? Uh, no, they were just uh, asking for uh, suggestions on the airbrushing. Advantages of the airbrushing? Yeah, the uh, gradients. Um, yeah, you couldn't, you probably can't do, you could do gradients, but like so when you're thinking luckily about we an have, airbrush and then, oh, look at this. Yeah, so this is a couple weeks ago, the time lapse that we did with uh, somebody, uh, somebody's, yeah, somebody's model that was uploaded. And you can see the difference here. I can't really do the gradient with a uh, acrylic right. paint. Because you have like, a brush. Yeah, with this brush, like I was saying before, the distance of how far away you are is uh, how much um, this looks of the darker. fuzziness. Was this black filament? Yeah. That's, oh, see, that's yeah. the difference. This is why you want that white filament, because mm -hmm. then you'll have more kind of color, I had to. shade. You can see how thick that is on there to try to get yeah. rid of the, yeah. um, it's not the cracky, base color. But it kind of depends on how many layers I think you, you put. Yeah. But yeah, I guess you can use it. But you can see, you know, the, the difference in using uh, an right. airbrush to get that gradient look as opposed to yeah. using the um, You can brush. do these sharp, fine lines, right? Depending yeah, on how yeah, close how, you how are. Yeah, how far away you are do from you, it. Can you change the nozzle at yeah, all? Yeah, there's a, as you can see in the kit, there it oh. comes with a couple of different nozzles. And it's actually like a little, um, you can adjust uh, like the... The fineness? The, the fineness the of, how, of, it? of how it's spraying as well. Okay. Yeah. Again, not, you know, an airbrush expert here, but... Uh, Hey, you know just more watching, than I do. Just you watching some YouTube videos and experience. just experimenting with it, you can uh, yeah. kind of get a feel for how to uh, Look at get that. all that fine you detail get a in there. Thirty-five millimeter tip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's cool. All right. Okay, cool. All right. Well, there's a little quick crash yeah, a lot course of, a in lot airbrushing. Of, uh, yeah, a lot of the um, work was actually in the uh, the airbrushing. The rest, as you can see, yeah. as we move on into the guide, it's pretty much just mounting the lens and attaching the hollowing on there. Yeah, so no glue needed, it just press fits, that's good. Press fits. And then um, you use some screws here. Yep, use some uh, Use the uh, M3 by 10 millimeter long screws. Yeah. And that was just because of how far I had to make the standoff, so it, there was room for the lens. I'd the recommend uh, plastic screws so you don't bridge any of the things. You think you ran into that? Yeah, so that's actually why there's only three of uh, the okay. machine screws on there, because otherwise three. on... Uh, the other side of the uh, JST, uh, yeah. you would bridge the uh, the light sensor and what is that like the ground to the USB? I think that is. Okay. But you could use like a plastic washer or something if you really wanted to go in there. Um, but three screws is pretty um, makes it pretty uh, stable in there. Cool. All right, and then uh, using more screws. For, more screws just to get all the uh, the tips and the edges to connect all together. And then uh, Lamar had a good idea of painting the screws, and yeah, that same. ended up working really good. Yeah, they kind of stuck out a little bit. Yep. So you can paint those the same color as the body. I would use acrylic uh, paint here, but I'm sure the airbrushing would work. I just had, we were already done, and this was like mm -hmm. last minute. She was like, oh, can you paint the screws? I didn't want to set everything up and mix all the colors, so I just grabbed some acrylic paint, yeah. and that still worked great. Cool, cool. That's a JST, you could always. Extend the battery if you want a bigger battery for a longer run time. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, uh, you can mold the arms if you want it to be like extra uh, curvy on the tips. 
uh, you can leave these. I just used a couple of rubber band or one rubber band to uh, hold the tips uh, curved in and just leave those like uh, a night uh, or two and it will retain that shape after a while. I think I, I'll have to experiment, but I don't, I think you could use like a heat gun or something to like uh, lock mm. in that curved shape um, or like hot water or something like to sort of mold that curve in there. Yeah, I think that might work better with PLA though. Yeah, that's why I, th I think that it might work with uh, Ninja Flex. Okay. Um, maybe a heat gun. Uh, I've not tried it out. The leaving it overnight on one of the other models did uh, retain okay. that shape, but you're going to need to let it hang out for like a night or two to yeah. keep that shape. Or if you don't want to, it is still going to curve around your face. Uh, and that means Ninja Flex. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could add like more uh, straps probably to like all all of these sides so that they're all. Uh, bending back like that when you attach it to your face. Mm -hmm. And speaking of attaching to your face, somebody was asking, can you actually see through that? I mean, if you, you position it. Yeah, peripheral view. You can yeah, see. you can see out these sides go to the, yeah. You can see out these sides. And if you wear glasses, it you know pushes it away from your face a little bit so you are able to see more. Uh -huh. So yeah, you could just put it on your head. You can still see out that way. <laughs> but that works. Cool, all right. You want to There's be... Uh, captured by one of Starro's little minions. There you go. Can be a Starro minion now. <laughs> and that is the project. Cool. Good use of Ninja Flex. Again, yeah, Ninja Flex. Pick up the Ninja Flex. <laughs> the air paint, airbrushing, and the Halloween. Yeah. Combined to make nice little uh, Halloween projects. Yeah. It was supposed to be simple and easy from the get go. So. Yeah. Good work. All right. That's this week's project. Yay. Check it out, folks. All right. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's What Are We Prototyping? Yay. Following the theme of, is it following the theme of all the Halloween stuff? Halloween cosplay props? Sure, sure, sure. All right. So last week, uh, I gave you a little sneak peek of a, uh, a prop from Star Trek, the animated series. This week, we have it uh, very much finalized. So this is a ray gun a blaster type gun um, and we have a feather inside we have a button we have sound effects now i'm using magnets uh, to pop off this top cover and then inside here you can see we got an m4 we got an amplifier and a little uh, mini oval speaker there's a lot of jsd connections so that i can still get to it and in the handle we have that button but also i haven't wired this yet but this is this little slider it's either going to adjust the volume or change up the sound effects. It's all done in Circuit Python, and right now it's just running demo code. I have a little snap fit thing at the bottom here, and this is where I'm hiding the battery. So I have a little built-in holder that holds this 2200 milliamp LiPo battery. And you can see here there is the slider. This is the 45 millimeter slider. And um, it comes with this little removable doohickey, and it's mounted with these screws. Um, pretty interesting shape. Um, it's using some lofts and some guide rails to make it a little bit thinner here, and it's a little bit more wide, and it's just got some nice curvy, curvy shapes to it. I added a little bit of a, like a notch here, a little cutaway, so that it's easy to open this. And then I have my little slide switch hiding back here, which turns it on and off. And um, the, the amplifier here is our favorite PAM8302 amplifier. And our favorite speaker is the mini oval speaker. When you uh, mount this to another surface, it makes it louder. Let me see if I can pop this out. There's what it sounds like outside. I know it sounds a little um, hissy. What do you call it? hissy, but that's because I just didn't make the volume louder. So, but when you plop it in there, it amplifies the sound. And I'm using magnets here so that I can get to the USB port for recharging or reprogramming. Um, so it's just one of those things. So magnets are always a nice thing to add. So uh, that is the progress. Um, it's going to accompany Phil B, Paint Your Dragons, uh, uh, what is it, Kurzinski? I forget the name of the, <laughs> of the, uh, of the space cats that are in the episode of Star Trek, but that is what we got. Um, yeah, so this will be, I think, in two weeks or so, and there's going to be another variant of this because the idea about this ray gun or this weapon or whatever is that it, it can transform transform into different um styles so there's another one it's called like the the, re, the computer mode that has it looks like a watermelon and it has buttons on it and then like you can talk to it so uh we'll see how we get that 
um, going. But uh, just to show you folks, this is uh, this is it. <laughs> and uh, I guess another look on the inside. So yeah, it's just the Feather M4. No prop maker feather wing here because we're, we're not using an accelerometer or NeoPixels. It's just like, let's get that amp in there and the speaker and uh, the button and the, uh, the little slide switch thing and the battery. And uh, yeah. I'm using the M4 because I think it has like, uh, it has a, a, a much better DAC for doing mm. um, sound. And that's really it. It's a fun ray gun. Um, yeah. Again, a nice cool, cool. little jumping off point for base of making a prop with sound effects. Yeah, and CircuitPython Python makes it really easy to do. I programmed it it's with, with demo code. <laughs> That's in the uh, CircuitPython Essentials Learn Guide from Katni. And I just, uh, I think I just changed one of the pins <laughs> and that was it. Really good idea. Uh, Jim Hendrickson is saying to combine that with a TV be gone. Ooh, and you can, <laughs> uh, you can turn on and off TVs and be like, aha! That's awesome. That'd be great. So uh, it's kind of big. But that's, I think, the scaling it's, of it is it's big. It's supposed to go with uh, with Philby's, Philby's costume. It's going to exactly. look about right with the scaling. But uh, it was a lot of fun CAD stuff to do. Um, and it's green because in the cartoon it's actually green and it looks like a watermelon. Just going to add that little. Yeah, um, I'll, curvy. Let Phil, I'll let Philby do that. And it, 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 this mode doesn't have those paints, so it's oh. I don't know how Philby's going to do it. He's going to have his own time to paint it. But yeah, that's it. There's the prop that we're working on. You can turn it off with the slide switch. Haha. -ha. And magnets, right? Magnets are always awesome because mm -hmm. you can get to the thing. And uh, no support material. I was able to print this without any supports because I just chopped this off and glued it back on. You know, I think that's fine. It's that's a little uh, bit of a seam, but hey, I kind of cut it up quite a few different places. You can see there's a seam here, there's a seam here. That's because I can print it flat and not have to worry about supports. But uh, there you go. Weird, obscure prop from Star Trek, the animated <laughs> series. And uh, Mark fun. Gambler is saying that, yeah, the M4 has the speed to really make the sound work better. It should be tougher with slower oh, processors. Know. Yeah. I think it would work with the RP2040, like MP3 playback, but yeah. It's very fun. I think they've, uh, Katni and Scott have finalized MP3, right? Or, or Dan, too. I think mm -hmm. Dan fixed uh, some of the bugs that was in the playback for that, so. Cool. All right, that's what we're prototyping. All right. We have another thing, but well, we're running out of time, so I'll, I'll share it next week. Oh, yeah, we've got like 10 minutes. All right, let's go yeah. ahead and jump into this week's... Not yet. Oh. I got the shop talk. Don't forget, we got ah. CAD files on GitHub. We have a GitHub repository that's, that holds all of our 3D models of various boards and components from Adafruit. The latest one I added was the LED matrix driver. This is the IS31FL3741. This has a ton of LEDs, the, the matrix array of RGB LEDs. These are not NeoPixels, these are RGB LEDs. Um, the footprint is an SMD2121. I only know that because I had to draw the dang thing, <laughs> but it has a stemma connector on it and um, pinouts and a nice lovely grid. Uh, it's, it's, you can control it over I squared C, so you can uh, use a cutie pie or a feather to control it over uh, CircuitPython, and there's a library, and the learn guide is in the works. So if you want to get the 3D model for this thing, maybe make a little case, you can do that using our 3D model, and it's up there on our GitHub repository. They're out of stock right now, but if you got yourself one, maybe you can do a cool project with it. It's got mounting holes as well, because I love mounting holes. So there you go, 3D model of the LED matrix driver. All right, now we can do, any questions about the LED matrix driver? Nope, they just wanted to be in stock. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I took the last one. No. All right, well that is the shop talk. It's a pretty quick one. Again, 3D models on GitHub. Pay Posted, post the link. yep. Thank you. Also another note on that, I went through and did some of the issues. I closed out some of the issues. Um, so thanks folks for hanging in there. I, uh, it's hard to get to all of them. I, I can't get to all of them, but I'm trying to get to them as I, as I have time. But there are some updates and some issues that I closed out. And if you have parts requests, you can use the issues tab as well. And if you want to contribute, you can do that as well. I haven't been able to look at the, the PR, sorry. <laughs> I need someone else to look at it. But anyway, that is the GitHub repository um, for CAD parts. Whew.
Yep. All Check right. by every week or yeah. star the page. You can get notified when a new one is updated, yeah. uploaded. Right. Thank you. And updated. Some of them got updated because some of them get stemified. Yes. Which is what happened. Very cool. All right. Now we're ready for. It. We didn't have any community makes this week, but we do have a time lapse Tuesday. Every Tuesday, Pedro finds um, a model from the community and 3D prints it this week. Yeah. So this was a. So, um, the suggestion request. from Lamar. Yeah, yeah, request from Lamar. We've been watching the What If series and yeah, the Marvels. What zombies What's... and Halloween? It's perfect. Glow yeah. in the dark filament. This is from Ian Robinson. He modeled this up, and you printed it out with some support material using some supports. glow in the dark yeah, filament. Yeah, supports all over. <laughs> Super fun. So this is available on. The Colts 3D website. I'll show you in just a second after the video is done. Very, very cool. And we're using the Color Fab uh, Glow in the Dark. He's gonna bite too. And I am just impressed with how the quality came out with so much uh, support material like all over. As wow. you can see, like in his mouth, like all up in his eyes, and it cleaned up very well. Yeah. So we're using the adaptive. Uh, layer heights for this, so it was anywhere from like 0.5 to 0.2 millimeters. This is a UV flashlight, and UV flashlights work really well with glow-in-the-dark stuff, so let's see how it glow-in-the-dark. Do it a little bit it. further away so it's not super blowing out the camera, but yeah, no, you're not going to see it as well here. Yeah, it it's looks, webcam, it's always hard to. Yeah, it looks it look way glowing. better in real life when uh, you're in the dark. Let me charge it up. I did post photons, a snap of this. Photons. I posted a, a snap of uh, uh, taking it off the bed and testing out the uh, glow in the dark, and it looks way better in the snap. Yeah, like it, it's like it's illuminating the whole room. <laughs> okay, now this is glow in the dark from like Amazon or from Color, Color Fab, Color but Fab? like any of the stuff on Amazon should okay. have enough of the uh, pigments uh, that make it glow in the dark to uh, uh, glow very nice. There's like different colors. This is just like the uh, standard like green uh, pigment, most common. It works a lot better if you just leave it in the sun, though. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It doesn't work as good with the ah, lights all around. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Percent fun. So I didn't print the entire model. There's like supposed to be that bust down right. there. Right. I was gonna say like. I just hey, wanted the the head for that. The, yeah. But excellent resin print. This is a printed resin printer. But oh, you could yeah. also print it. On it works a, pretty good FDM on FDM. Yeah. So you can go in there and do some painting and whatnot. Cool, so shout out to Ian. Yeah, this is really good. Which is a sculpt, uh, he's a sculptor that works for um, ZBrush, Pixlo. right? Pixlow. Yeah. Oh, they yeah, the Pix he's Logic. an instructor for, instructor for, for uh, ZBrush. So excellent. if you guys, that we're not really sculptors, but if you want to. I'm sorry, uh, I may pronounce his name wrong. Ian or Ian? Was Ian. Mr. Robinson. Thank I mean, you. you can check out his, uh, <laughs> he's an instructor. You can check out all of his uh, YouTube link is right down there if you scroll a little bit. Check yeah. out his profile. Oh, cool! So you can get some tutorials and stuff for mm -hmm. uh, using ZBrush. Yeah, uh, um, we haven't used ZBrush. Yeah, in, we haven't used oh ZBrush my god, so long. We're, we're, that's not really our skill set, but mm -hmm. it, it's a super fun thing to do. Um, yeah, so shout out to uh, Ian or Ian mm -hmm. for uh, releasing this as a free model. Yeah, so, it looks really nice. Yeah. It's so detailed. So uh, uh, Pedro has got a good like. Hey, you can FDM it. Just some, some support material. Yeah. They just tongue. Some good tongue. Right. And the teeth all came out perfect. Like. I mean, as perfect so, as you uh, can get. Yeah. I can do some better focusing here if you give me a second. There you go. Closer. Yeah, look at that. Uh, and uh, what's your layer height? Uh, so we're using an adaptive layer height. So it's oh, anywhere really? from like, uh, I think it's like 0.5. That's cool. To uh, 0.2. That's some damn good d d detail. Mm -hmm. Even in the back here where it usually overhangs where like the uh, supports are. Yeah. And this would snap into the... Uh, into the bust, yeah. yeah. It's kind of funny. It's kind of like his, he chopped his head off and. I mean, uh, kind of close to what potato. happens hot, in hot, that. Hot, uh, hot, hot, hot potato. Ah, <laughs> don't bite me. Ah. Sorry. Oh, that'd be cool. Yanni is suggesting an LED stand for the zombie. He gets like some uh, with the UV LEDs. Mm, get some yes, nice, that uh, would be cool. Illumination on it. Cool, cool. Yeah, you should have printed the bust because <laughs> the bust shows uh, what if. Yeah. Ah, whatever. I mean, the, the really head tap. is like the hero. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, Cap. Your time is over, and he slices them in half. <laughs> ah, spoilers! I'm so sorry. Oh, that was last week. Uh, yeah, it was that last episode. Week. You're right. There's a new episode tonight, which we won't watch because we're going to be uh, showing and telling. Show and tell. <laughs> which, uh, yeah, go ahead and segue into the All end right. there. All right. So that's 
you can get the model off, off Colt 3D. There's a link. You can check it. Nice little way to uh, test the uh, the settings on your printer yeah. and get like the most highest quality in yeah. terms of uh, using a um, like a high Look low at this layer, layer height. height. Freaking fifty microns. Wow. No, like five microns. <laughs> 0 0.05 millimeter mm. layer height. That's 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 crazy. Very cool. All right. Well, that's this week's time lapse. Check it out. All right. All right. Cool. Full week of shows ahead. That's right. Tonight is ask. Uh, tonight is. Show and tell, we hope you're on there. Um, this week is special edition, hosted by JP. JP will be hosting, and we'll be hosting the following week. Yeah. Every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Come and share your work in progress, ideas, maker spaces, retro gear, all this is very fun. So check it out. We'll drop a link at 7.20ish. We'll drop a link in the Discord chat room where you can click on it. It's a StreamYard link. You just click on that, and then your microphone and your webcam will was what we'll use <laughs> great explanation and then shortly after at 8 p.m tonight is ask an engineer with lamar and phil we'll be covering all the new products uh, python on hardware uh, and news in the open source community beyond cool i don't know what else what else and then at tomorrow tomorrow is jp's workshop every thursday at 4 p.m eastern time or 1 p.m pacific time yeah, so you can check out with JP, live building, um, and more. Scott's on every Friday at 2 p.m. Pacific time or 5 p.m. Eastern time. A full hour of uh, deep diving, <laughs> right, in CircuitPython dev and some of the core work. So shout out to uh, Scott. And then every Sunday from the desk of Lady Ada, where she does amazing things like um, the great search with DigiKey and um, work in progress stuff. So you can check that out. And then on Mondays is the CircuitPython meeting that happens every Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. It happens live in the Discord chat room and it gets posted as a, a bit of a podcast and podcast services or on the YouTube playlist. I'm not done. Tuesdays is JP's product pick of the week. This week he did an RF or our, mm -hmm. our radio breakout board, which is really, really fun. He had yeah. a lot of cool demos, and uh, he's having fun with that one. So every Tuesday, you can get 50% off yes. the pick of the week, and it only happens when he's streaming. So be sure to check it out every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, or 1 p.m. Pacific Time. And then we're back over here on Wednesdays. We do the show every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We hope to see you tonight. If not, good luck on all your maker endeavors. But until then, remember to make a great day. A great day. Bye, everybody. Stay see you safe later and good luck. We'll see you tonight. Bye, folks. <laughs>